What's up guys? This is Matt Mandu from Headwires Adventure and I'm going to be talking to you today about a few different types of bibs. We've got the Coca-Tap bib, the NRS bib, and the Level 6 bibs. And I'm going to go over the pros and cons and why you might choose one over the other and just go over the different features of each of the bibs. So the first bibs that I want to talk about are the Coca-Tap bibs. So this is the one that I've used longest and all the bibs are going to have built-in booties. So your feet are not going to get wet when you use these, kind of like waders, except these are not insulated. If you go to the fly shop and pick up a pair of waders, they're actually neoprene on the outside that gives a little extra warmth. If I'm going to be using these, whether it's kayaking or fishing, what I'm going to do is do uh, usually a pair of hiking socks, it's something quick dry, so if they do get a little damp or sweaty, it's not going to get really gross in there. And if it gets really cold, I'm using wool socks. But going from the feet up, you do have a sealable cuff. So once you put your booties on over your booty, you could actually seal it to keep the sand out because that's a big thing that will deteriorate these if you get sand in your boots. There's a lot of rubbing. You will get small holes in this and then you'll start to get a slow leak. Going up from the foot cuffs, you've got your knees. So on a lot of these dry suits, you're gonna have reinforced knees just because that's gonna be a point of a lot of movement. And if you do end up kneeling or some people have to get out of their kayaks that way, you'll have something that's a little bit more abrasion resistant and hopefully will last you longer. Up from there, this being a men's suit, you have a relief zipper. So you can stand up, unzip, which is completely waterproof, so you can go basically all the way to the chest or all the way to where your arms come out of the bibs. Uh, but you've got your relief zipper, so you can pull that, relieve yourself, zip it back up, and then go be get back in the water without having to worry about getting wet. Up from that, the Coca-Tat one specifically has a tunnel. So this you can roll in with a dry top and make almost a full dry suit. If done correctly, if you do completely submerge yourself, you might get a trickle of water in, but not anything that's going to freeze you or keep you uncomfortable. Uh, up from there, you do have your little zipper pocket. So whatever you want to put in there, whether you're doing uh, clippers and pliers and things like that for fishing, car keys, things like that, it's all going to be right there and accessible to you. And then you've got your suspenders to keep them up, keep you comfy. So that's the Coca Tat ones. Next are the level six. So these ones I just started using recently and I've been a really big fan of them so far. First off, they're very light. Just the material itself is a lot lighter of material. Uh, same thing at the feet is you do have your built in booties for being waterproof. You've got your cuff so that you can take your booty, stick it underneath, pull it tight so you don't have to worry about sand getting into your boots. Like I said, if you get sand in your boots, you do have potential of wearing some small holes into your booties and developing slow leak. Nothing that's going to you know, fill up with water, but something that's gonna get your feet wet and maybe make you uncomfortable for the day. You do, again, have your reinforced knees, so it is a little stiffer through here than the rest of the material, which, like I said, part of that makes this very very light but you do still have a little bit of extra fabric in the spots that are going to take more of the abuse. Another thing that I really do like about the uh, level 6 ones is their side pockets both on the left and right hand side they are not waterproof pockets there is a little drain in there if you go up past them they will get some water in them but again if you have a car key that doesn't have a key fob it's a great place for those or anything else that you're not too worried about getting wet. Same thing in this you have a release zipper. What I like about this is their little T-handle on it. So it's a lot bigger so that you could easily get a grip, pull it open, and pull it closed, even if your hands are really cold from being out in the elements. Like I said, with these, you're usually going to layer whether it's a hiking sock or wool or thermals, anything like that to keep yourself warm, especially on these ones because, like I said, they are a bit thinner. What I like about this and the NRS suit is you've now got a waist belt. So you'll take this, pull it tight, and that's going to pull it tighter around your hips or just above your hips. So if you did fall in the water and you did have some water get in the top of these, it's not going to completely fill up. You're going to have time to get up and get safe. You don't want to have something that's going to fill up and wash you away. Uh, so that 
even though it's a small feature, it's something that's really big. If you're going to be around water and, and using these, it's really nice to have something that will seal you off in case you do end up completely submerged, since it isn't a full dry suit. They also, under the armpits, have pull cord so that you can make it a lot tighter and more form-fitting around your upper body so you don't have a lot of material moving around. They also have a pocket on the chest, but what I like about this one is it's deep. So on the Coca Tat one, it's a pretty small pocket. On this one, you can fit quite a bit in there. And I was doing phone wallet and keys in that, and it wasn't too bulky. Uh, under a life jacket, it might be, but I've been doing a lot of wading and fishing out of these. And then something that's pretty small, but I still like, is the way that these clasp together. So where your suspenders come in, You've got a little notched groove and a piece <laughs> that is going to buckle into it. So you could actually hear it snap. And it's just, just plastic, but it works great. It's a snug fit. The elastic, you know, like I said, these are new, so it's really taunt. And yeah, awesome, awesome. Been putting a lot of abuse into them and more to come. After that, we have got the NRS bibs. And so these ones, again, you've got your booty. You've got your adjustable ankle clasp. And then this one, you do have a pocket on the right hand side. And this one is waterproof. So this one, if you put your keys, even with a key fob or anything like that in there, it is a waterproof pocket. I will say that the knees are really reinforced. These feel like the most burly out of all of them. And then the material itself is thicker too. So if you're rough on things, this might be a better way to go. I'm sure it'll act, uh, it'll act as more of an insulation as well. You have your relief zipper, like all of them do, and again, a nice T-style handle that you can really get a grip on and open and close easily. You've got your wade belt so that if you do end up in the water, you can pull this tight and not have an issue with your bibs filling up with water or taking you downstream. There is no pocket on the front here, so that's not, again, a huge deal, but it is something nice to have that's right there on your chest at the ready. And you do still have your tensioners under the armpits to make a more form-fitting suit. After that, same idea, you've got your suspenders. Buckle it up, pull it tight, and go get in the water. So the other thing that I'm going to talk about is layering under these. So as you can see here, I've taken my pants off and I've cut long underwear on. These ones are Patagonia thermals. So I've also used the NRS thermals and everybody makes them and basically it's to keep you insulated and warm or just to keep the material off your skin. I do not like the material that these are made out of touching my skin. It's uncomfortable. I've done it in just boxer shorts before and I didn't like it. So I'll either use something that the runners use like a style of leggings. So when it's still warm out and you don't need the insulation, you just have a barrier between your skin and the material itself. These Patagonia ones, as well as the NRS thermals, will keep you warm and you don't have much against you. These are very thin material, but they do keep you very, very warm. And then from there, I'll do a shirt or a sweater or a rain jacket. And for my pants, a lot of the times, if it's very cold, I'll do the thermals and a pair of sweatpants and then get into the suit. And that usually keeps me pretty happy. Uh, for the socks, I'll usually use a hiking sock, something that's longer. And if I really need some extra warmth, I'm gonna go to a wool sock. It'll actually provide a little bit of extra cushion too because those socks are so cushy and big. And you do wanna have something a little bit taller so that you can close that cuff around your boots just again so you can keep the sand out because that's a really big thing with these uh, also while changing in and out of these you do want to have something that you could stand on you don't want to be standing on bare ground if you put little pinholes in the bottom whether it's standing on some sort of prickly weeds or rocks or anything like that you don't want to damage them they are expensive they're really nice but you want to keep them you know being completely dry as long as possible. Uh, these ones are the NRS boundary boots and then these ones are the NRS paddle wet shoe. I've been using these a lot for wading. They do have a tall enough ankle that you can get the clasp around it and keep the sand out and stay very comfortable. 
and next I'm going to suit up and show you what it looks like. Uh, now I've got the bibs on and I've got my rain jacket underneath and you do want to layer depending on what you're doing with uh, the rain jacket underneath so this is waterproof so that now that I'm getting rained on or in the water up to my chest I'm still waterproof. Once you have it on you want to buckle your waist strap, pull that nice and snug so that if you do fall in you're not going to fill up with water. A good way to check it if you have this tight enough is when you get down towards the ground, my pant legs kind of uh, fill up with air. And if the air can't get out, the water's not going to get in. So you could also burp these if you need to. So when you get in the water, you can undo the relief zipper a bit, crouch or get in the water a little bit so it forces more of the air out. You have your straps under the armpits, pull those tight, and adjust your suspenders. Now you've got a nice form-fitting wader or bibs, whatever you want to call them, whether you're kayaking or fishing. But, you know, it's comfy, they're light, they're breathable as long as you get a higher quality one. They do have different materials, they'll all keep you dry, but some will keep you feeling better than others, just a little less musty. Uh, but yeah, and then with this Kokatat rain jacket that I really like, you've got rubber gaskets around the wrist that you can adjust so that if I do stick my hands in the water, I might get a trickle of water in, but I'm going to stay for the most part completely dry. So something like this is what I'm using a lot this time of year. This is the best time of year to be out on the water because it scares most people away and you'll have the lake, the river to yourself. There are no bad days, just bad equipment and bad clothing. You could be out there and be perfectly comfortable in 30 degree weather, raining, drizzling, maybe a bit of a breeze, something that would scare most people away, keep them at home, and you're still out there catching fish, kayaking, and having a good time. Don't waste this part of the year. You know, summer's great. We have those seasons to enjoy, but we've also got the winter and fall seasons to enjoy. And again, those are all for you. If you're willing to get the equipment to be out there and be comfortable, you're going to be the only person out there a lot of the times. So until next time, stay fishy, my friends. Leave us a comment ask us any questions we'll be happy to give you some info and don't forget to like and subscribe follow headwaters adventure company on facebook and instagram and me matt man do and we'll keep putting out the videos hopefully catching fish kayaking and doing everything else we can to have fun while it's wet